Welcome to day eight of Project Pack number seven. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And uh, today I thought I'd do something a little different. We're going to do a, a version of Cadent on a square gray tile. And it's kind of a funky version of Cadent. It's almost like one little uh, parcel of Cadent. Or one big parcel of Cadent. Uh, right. Standing alone as a uh, as like a, a, a focus piece, so we're we're only going to do this one fragment of Cadent, and and see what we do with that. I just I I, I love the the tangle, and um, it's some it's not one that I do that often. It's usually a Ricky tangle, but uh, I thought, oh, let's let's see what we can do with this. So I'm doing it pretty pretty large. And, and you can see that those, those initial orbs that I put in, I, I made them all different sizes. I kind of liked that idea. And um, it, it goes together like, like a regular cadent here with the, with the uh, swirling S shapes. And now I'm, I'm, I'm sort of auraing them, but the auras uh, meet at top and bottom. Uh, sort of like a billowing, right? Like a billowing yeah. of the line. And using that same takeoff and land, and yep, and from just following the like how the shape would ripple out if it was anchored at both ends. Right, right. Which is kind of a nice way of or. Well, look at that. Just yeah. that. Even itself. just that. that and kind we'll do of that a, in cadence sometimes. Yeah, and it's there's a lot of movement in that. It it has this feeling like it's it's uh, it's dancing. It's like or, a breeze blowing. Right, so. right. So I'm doing it on the inside now, which is. Uh, so beautiful. Look at that. How like easy is leaf, that? Leaf shapes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm working with that uh, darker blue black uh, uh, PN. The PN, yeah. Yeah. Looks really nice on that paper. Mm. So you can see I'm thinking my way through this as we go along. And uh, I've already done it once, but uh, uh, the first time I did it, I'm, I, I said, oh, I wish I had done this or that. And uh, so we're just sort of um, thinking our way through this, just like you would as you were doing it. So every time you do it, meaning every time you put down a, a stroke, it looks different. So you'll see that she's pausing to... Uh, like contemplate, okay, well, do I put one here? What's, what, what's it asking for? So it always, when I watch Maria Tangle, it, it looks like she's in communication with, with the work itself. And I think in Centangle, because you're not trying to replicate something, mm -hmm. um, the tangles usually tell you what to do next. Right. You know, you're, you're looking at it, and it's saying, no, okay, now do this, do this. And I can see, like, I'm just about done here. So look at that. I'm putting a, a narrower bead on the inside um, so that it gives it some, that it, almost like a depth that you want, it to, you want to be looking down into that as opposed to it being up above. Oh, that's neat. So see how she wrapped all the way around that cadent piece. So it's a little bit different than the other ones. I'm, I'm, I'm working, uh, I'm trying to think what we could compare that to. Almost like a mooka, like. It's unwinding. Yeah, I have to, I had to throw some mooka in there. I just, I get a little anxious if I don't have <laughs> at least one. So yeah, it's, it's almost nice like getting to look like a jack in the pulpit of some sort, or, or mm -hmm. the way it's uh, the the, uh, the curves are coming out. Yep. Another one. So because it's a standalone piece, I didn't have to worry about it being like in a fragment. This would have been difficult to do, probably. Um, although, you know, I suppose I could try it. And I left a lot of this uh, in when I edited the, the film first because I wanted to give you an insight 
a little bit into how Maria is approaching this and how what her you know interaction and thinking process is as she's going along or feeling process. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm placing it because it's going to be a mono tangle. I uh, I'm placing it on the tile to give it to give it some uh, you know balance. So now I'm going in with the blue 01 micron, and it looks like I'm going to focus on some of these ribbons. So it looks like you're doing the, the, the first, original the ones, first yeah. ones, yeah. So if you can remember what the first ribbons were, where they were, that's what we're doing. We're working on all those right now. But you know, if you if you miss it, it's, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. Nobody's going to, there's no tangled police that's going to go up to you and say, yeah. wah, 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 wah. it's so uh, I mean, forgiving. Like, like any, any work like this that we're doing together, the objective is not for you to duplicate exactly what anybody else has done, but to, to provide like a, a springboard to uh, Let's just give you some ideas. Yeah, and, ideas, and, yeah. and it will become part of your uh, your toolkit or not. And I'm keeping these fairly simple. You know, I'm just uh, taking uh, a tangle and then making it into something else, but using all these uh, techniques that we we all know and love. And we don't have to think about it too too much. Uh, I love just adding beads and taking taking my time and kind of smushing them in there so that they they feel like there's a tightness that's holding them in. And you'll notice that they they actually go out over the line. So not a, they're smushed together and they like jewelry. Redefine that mm. line, right? Beautiful. And that blue is just popping out. Uh, it's going to be cool. All right, so she started with the center one and then went out to each edge. Oh, this is fun. So I'm just adding some uh, detail, uh, just like a little smiley face there on the sides, uh, on each one of these beads. Has m more like an etching effect, mm. you know, uh, or engraving. Oh, I'm going to go in another one. It's been so long since I've done this, uh, I have to remember what I did. So again, we're going to um, put uh, interior uh, auras on the uh, on the next ribbons going towards the center. Mm. And just and she rotates it every time. Rotates the tile every time. So adding some uh, drama here, a nice deep dark color. You know, you always well, I hate to say always, but it's good to have some intense color um, in your composition. It seems to uh, balance well with the fine lines that Zentangle is all about. And a lot of times we'll think not only of, uh, of the color balance, but also the contrast of straight and curve yeah, interest, as well. Yeah. So that, that's both deep color and, and it's got very straight edges, which... Again, you know, is not like me. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> But they're a little tilted, so. Yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll go with that. Well, that kind of looks pretty. So yeah. You can see where we're going here. It's going to be, um, it almost um, looks like uh, clothing from the Middle Ages where they had a lot of these uh, poofy, uh, billowy clothes with all kinds of detail and tapestries and beads. And yeah. I love that stuff. <laughs> it's really great. But I would wear this. <laughs> I can think of as those pantaloons that the uh, jokers or right. jesters, court jesters, right. were, wore. So I'm putting in some little pinstripes, kind of neat. Just a detail that's easy, but because you put two together as opposed to uh, the same metering. So it's a version of sort of like a 
patterned halibut here. Mm -hmm. She's defining with an aura the in insides of all of these lovely billowing shapes and then just filling each one of them with very basic tangles. So I've got tipple, then a slice of uh, slanted knight's bridge, and then some hollabaw there. Well, it could be that other tangle, not the striping thing that Molly does all the time. Right. What's the name of that one? Vega? Is it Vega? It's the one I was trying to remember. But. Yeah. We're so bad with remembering names. Unless we have this, the list in front of us. So don't ever you know, beat yourself <laughs> up if you don't know the name of a tangle, because, again, the police don't come and say, what? You can always look what it up. What did they say? <laughs> <laughs> you know how the police do that. Right. <laughs> I love how they, they're not the same number on every side. That light, thin blue and the dark, heavier blue, great combination. So I'm, I'm adding some of these. I love these very metered, structured uh, um, little dark beads. They're almost like jet beads. And um, they haven't, I, I love the way they s sort of sit, you know. And the, the, you don't even need to color the behind, you know, it right. just sort of does it on its own. Well, I love the uh, the contrast of the uh, almost those uh, the striping of like the light tipple, then the darker night's bridge, then the light halibut, then the darker. Uh, you can see that beads. I didn't worry about the fact that there weren't four of those. Right. <laughs> it didn't bother me That's at what all. I like. <laughs> So what are we doing here? <laughs> Look <What>? like teeth. <laughs> dental work, you know, that's they call that dental work on, on on houses when they have that. There's a little dental work. <laughs> but these these are like uh, smushed in, uh, even more smushed in little beads. squares. Yeah. Well, they're they're actually squarish. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't square know. Square beads. Right. Oh, so now, oh, this is the gold jelly roll, and I'm um, just adding in a uh, nice bold stripe in there. Oh. So this, nice. the way this pen works, the ink just comes out and it's just, you can move it around you and just... You just have to tickle the paper. Yeah. If you start pressing hard, it won't come out, which d makes no sense at all, right. you know? But if you think about a ballpoint, the ballpoint has to just touch the paper for the ink to roll out. I love that contrast. Again, it's giving it a very regal look, right? Mm -hmm. oh, very, um, again, that Renaissance uh, overdone uh, royalty looking stuff. So wow. just remember this is, uh, the gold will stay wet for a little bit, so mm -hmm. see how she's holding the tile there. Oh, I already like the way it looks. Mm -hmm. And just turning the tile so you can see where you're going and... And your hand doesn't uh, get onto the wet stuff. Right. <clears throat> I love that. Mm. Ah. So I'll go in and do... It's a great contrast. So I'm putting some gold between those uh, checker, checkers or the, the uh, Knight's Bridgey stuff just for something different, unexpected. Right? Yeah. 
unexpected, but when you see it, it's like, oh, what a great plan. And a lot of, a lot of tiles come together like that because they're not planned and it, it just looks so organic with itself because it grew in that very organic way. This is such a good example of uh, something that's each step of the way is so simple and basic, yet when it's all put together, it looks overwhelmingly complicated, but you know the secret, so. So I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, when you have something that's so decorative, that, that maybe if you have some spaces that um, are a little bit plainer, you know, to mm -hmm. balance off that, um, uh, you know, one-third, two-thirds thing, you know, two-thirds of it is pattern and one-third is plain. Uh, one-third is dark, two-thirds is light. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's that uh, phi ratio uh, thing that you like to have in there. Not, not perfectly, but just in the back of your mind um, for composition. It's a little uh, close-up aura-ing. and then rounding in those corners just a bit. Nice. It just sets it off from the, uh, from the background of the tile. So on these jelly roll pens, I always keep like a scrap paper next to me that every once in a while you want to go and twirl the tip on a scrap paper just to clean, clear it off a little bit. So I'm going in now with this beautiful charcoal, that blue, blue charcoal pencil. After and, you let it dry. Right. <clears throat> and it's just enough to give it this uh, uh, lovely softness, you know. Afterthought, right? Yeah, that was that little extra one there. Oh, that extra one. What, what are we going to put in there? Huh. The kiss method, right? Keep, us, right. keep, keep it, it simple. simple. <laughs> Silly? Silly. That's good. <laughs> And I guarantee you, nobody's going to go around and count those, except for Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have him anywhere near your pieces. <laughs> but that's part of the charm. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with, with being exact, too. It's just, even if I tried to be precise, I just don't think I could pull it off. So I'm now adding some uh, graphite uh, to give it uh, a tone down the perfect color. You want, you know, uh, uh, for me, in order to show uh, some sort of reality, you got to tone down the color right from the pen, right mm -hmm. from the tube. You, you, that's a big uh, part of what I do. So I'm, I'm spinning some graphite off of these orbs. Almost like it's a spinner, you know? Remember those uh, right. paint spinners? 
but it's like the uh, they're winding down and creating a shadow there. So it's mm -hmm. even over the gold and everything. And you can work with the tangle as you're shading it. So when the tangle gets small and tight, it necessarily there's more ink there, so it lends itself to uh, to being darker. So you're just sort of reinforcing that with the with the graphite. Yeah, so you can now see that that they're almost like look tufted. See how the the uh, the orbs are pulling in all of this beautiful silk, and that's what it looks like is silk, right? Hmm. And where it's winding together, it, it gets a little darker, moving away, and. Mm -hmm. So you can also see that when you put the, the graphite down, it's just the beginning because then you move it around. So what were we going to do with these orbs, right? I can never leave those alone. I'm going in with this uh, darker pen, and I'm adding some love, you know, just going around and adding details that, that might have wanted more... Uh, well, more come presence, forward, yeah. more presence... So the you know those these lines that were spinning off the orbs, um, so you can see them, the, the darkness. And I, I'm just going over the lines that are there. And also sometimes when you put the uh, the chalk down or the graphite down, it it dulls the line a little bit. Mm -hmm. So just by restating it afterwards, it it makes it crisp and it's also reinforcing that it's uh, getting darker in there. That's what, you know, when, you know, when I would do a tile, this is like my favorite part, is, you know, adding the shading and adding the contours that maybe didn't make it the first time around or, um, you know, highlighting some of these things. And I'm, I'm, you can see I'm going around the gold because uh, the gold is hard to control. And if you go over the edges, you can, you can mm -hmm. see those lines a little better. But it also makes the gold really framed, and then it's it looks like it's peeking through the the, the split in the in the blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really gives depth. And this is fun. This is you know you're playing. You don't have to really think about it or anything. It's already there. Beautiful. So I have my white chalk, General's chalk pencil that we all love so much, and uh, adding some highlights on the silk, and just bringing it out to the to the sun. Reminds me of a Fabergé egg. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see what everybody does with these right. little prompts, right? Well, a lot of these uh, project packs are just full of uh, ideas that you can use and cross-pollinate all sorts of other things that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, you might think you might there might be one little thing in here that you just absolutely love, and then you add that to your tile, as opposed to you know doing the whole thing exactly the same. Or you could do the whole thing exactly mm -hmm. the same. It's a great exercise. Like, like being part of a class, you know. Or repeating an experiment that's already been done and you learn something from it more than just reading about it. So I kind of just glide uh, my tortillon over that to, to get the excess um, of the white, just to be able to kind of move it over, soften it. Nice. Oh, but there's more. But wait. But wait. So I got my graphite pencil, and I'm going to uh, kind of give these orbs that have just been uh, ignored this whole time and see what we do with this. I hope I don't screw it up. A little. Now they're like these beautiful freshwater pearls. Right. Not. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's what you did.
bring it into contemporary times, right? Or maybe it could be a piece on a suit of armor, right? And they screwed them in over the silk, and then it twisted the silk yeah. as it was being yeah. twisted in there, right? Right. You see how she's flaring the, the ends there just a little bit. Probably where the screwdriver slipped. That's true. Here we go. That was fun. All in a night's work. But a boom. <laughs> but a boom. <laughs> Fun. So. Uh, oh, I did want to show yeah. you the first, my first uh, version too, so you can see um, uh, what I did here and what I made changes in. So after your chop, you sign your tile and uh, keep it. Look at it later. Uh, get inspiration from it. Hold it. Turn it this way and that. Hold it at arm's length, and you always see something different at a at a different perspective both in, in physical distance and time distance. So you can see the first one I did, it has a, a different character um, altogether. And it's not, it's not that one is better than the other. They just sort of morphed. And I, one I, inspired the other. <clears throat> right. So we look forward to what you do. And uh, please post it on the app and uh, comment and subscribe and do all those youtube -y things. And, uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. See you later. Bye. Bye. Now.